All right, welcome back to Calculus with Mr. Robeson. Today we are looking at something called the quotient rule to take derivatives. Quotient means dividing, so when you're dividing two things. And then we'll apply that to tangent lines and slopes of tangent lines and that sort of stuff afterwards. All right, so first up, we'll just give it to you. We can also derive this if we want to using the uh, limit definition of derivative, but it's much easier just to try and memorize this. So we've got a top function and a bottom function or what we call a high function and a low function, all right? So it's bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared, or low d high minus the high d low square the bottom and away we go. All right, so low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, and away we go. So that's that's our phrase to help us remember the, the quotient rule. I always did bottom times through the top minus the top times through the bottom over the bottom squared, but low d high, high d low, square the bottom, and away we go. Makes a lot more sense, a lot easier. All right, so we've got a bottom function here, x squared plus one. We've got a top function here, five x minus two, and we wanna find its derivative. So the derivative of y, which we can say is y prime if we want, is low, so it's just the regular function on the bottom, x squared plus one, times the derivative of the top, d high. Derivative of five x minus two is just five, minus, so it's always minus on top, the top function, five x minus two, times the derivative of the bottom function. Derivative of x squared is two x, derivative of one is zero, and now we square the bottom and away we go. X squared plus one squared. So there's our derivative. So that's the calculus part. The calculus part is done. So now we want to simplify it. So now the algebra part comes in. So we get that our derivative is, well, let's see, we're going to distribute the five here. We just want to clean up the top really. Nothing to do on the bottom. Minus, distribute the two X. So we get two times five is 10. X times X is X squared. Minus negative, that's going to be plus. 2 times 2 is 4, so we get 4x on top. The bottom is just going to stay x squared plus 1 squared. And let's see, there's some like terms here. We've got a 5x squared and a minus 10x squared, so that's a negative 5x squared. We've got a plus 4x. We've got a plus 5. Doesn't look like anything can factor out of that. And we've got x squared plus 1 quantity squared still. And there's our answer. We're just going to leave it just like that. All right. Technically, I think you can leave it like this on the AP exam, and that's the derivative. All right, so applying this now for tangent lines. We want to find the equation of the tangent line. So that means we need a point. Oh, good, they gave us a point. Isn't that nice? So that means we need a slope. So that means we need to find the derivative when the x value is negative 1. So that's going to be our slope. So we need to take the derivative of this. Yeah. Well, this fraction on top of a fraction is not fun, but we can rewrite this as three minus x to the negative one over x plus five. And now we can take the derivative of this using the quotient rule. We've got a low and we've got a high. All right, so we're just gonna follow up the quotient rule. The quotient rule says low times the derivative of the top Derivative 3 is 0. We bring down the negative 1, so we get positive 1 out front, and x to the 1 less exponent, so that's negative 2, minus the top, 3 minus x to the negative 1, times derivative of the bottom. Derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of 5 is 0, so we get just 1. All over the bottom squared. All right, so there's our derivative. So now, if we want to, we can simplify our derivative. But really, we just need to find the derivative when x is negative 1. So let's just plug in negative 1. Save ourselves the trouble. So we get negative 1 plus 5, negative 1 raised to the negative 2, minus 3 minus negative 1 to the negative first, times 1. We don't need to write times 1. All over negative 1 plus 5 squared. All right, so that's going to be 4. Negative 1 to the negative 2 is just 1, so we get 4, minus 
negative 1 to the negative first is just negative 1. These two negatives are going to cancel out. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So we're going to get 4 minus 4 on top. Hmm. On the bottom, we're getting 4 squared. So we're getting 0 over 16, which is just 0. If the top is 0, it's 0. If the bottom is 0, it's a problem. So that means our slope is 0. So that means our line is y minus the y value equals 0 times x minus the x value. Negative 1 minus negative 1 gives us plus 1. This whole thing is just 0. We can add the 1 over, and we just get y equals 1. There's our tangent line. All right, y equals 1 is a horizontal line, so it looks something like that. All right, another one for you to try. So find the derivative of g of x, where we've got x squared minus, or sorry, x squared plus 3 on top and 2x minus 1 on the bottom. So I'll give you a second to try that one out. Pause it if you need to. All right, so our derivative rule says it's the bottom, low d high. So derivative of the top to d is the derivative, so we get 2x minus high d low. Derivative of the low is just 2. Square the bottom, and then away we go. So 2x minus 1 squared. And now we've got to try and simplify the top because we're trying to make it look like one of these answer choices here. So if we simplify the top, we're going to distribute this 2x here. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared minus 2x. We're going to distribute the 2 and the negative here. So we're going to get a negative 2x squared and a minus 6. Our bottom stays the same. If you notice with all of the problems, our bottom has basically stayed the same every time. There will come a time where the bottom does something, but for now, they're basic. So 4x squared minus 2x squared gives us 2x squared. Negative 2x, yep, that's the only x term. So minus 2x minus 6 all over 2x minus 1 squared. We could factor out a 2 if we wanted to, but I think that's about it. We couldn't factor any more, so we can leave it like this. And that does look exactly like answer choice A. Yep, so that's it. We did it. All right, so now there are some times where we can simplify. Instead of doing the quotient rule, we can just do a regular old power rule. And then there's other times where, well, other times where we might just want to do a quotient rule. All right, so if there's just one term on the bottom, one term in the denominator, we usually want to simplify instead of trying to do the quotient rule. So we simplify, and then we're going to take the derivative. All right, and the reason we can do that is we can just divide each one by 6 here. So this is going to be x squared over 6 plus 3x over 6. Or we can think of this as 1 sixth x squared plus 3 over 6 is 1 half x. And now to take the derivative of that, derivative of y, y prime, we just bring down, we're just doing power rules, which is generally much easier than quotient rules. All right, now, if we didn't notice this and we wanted to do it as a quotient, well, we could, just when we took the derivative of 6, it'd be 0, and that second term on top would go away. And it would all still cancel out to be the exact same thing. But if we bring down the 2, we get 2 times 1 6, which is 1 3rd, x to the first. Derivative of x is 0, so plus 1 half. There's our answer. That's our derivative. All right, we'll mix it up with the colors here. So don't get confused. So this guy, again, we're just over one number. We don't want to do a quotient rule. This is just one guy. So we're going to say this is 5 eighths x to the fourth. And then we can take the derivative of that. So derivative y prime is, bring down the 4. So we get 5 eighths times 4x to the third. 8 and the 4 are going to cancel, leave us with a 2 on the bottom. So we get 5 halves x to the third. There's our answer. All right. We'll go with the dark purple. Next one. Again, so we have x's on the bottom now this time. And we got another number out front. So we can try and do a quotient rule. Or we can just try and, well, since there's just one term in the bottom, basically distribute. So if we simplify first, we get negative 3 times 3 is negative 9x over 7x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is going to give us plus 6x squared over 7x. 
And now I'll simplify some more. The x's here cancel. One of the x's here cancels. And we're left with negative 9 over 7 plus 6 over 7 x's. All right, that's just simplifying. I haven't taken any derivatives yet. So now the derivative now, y prime is, well, negative 9 over 7. That is a constant. Its derivative is 0. This guy is a linear term. Its slope is 6 over 7. All right, or x to the first. Derivative x to the first is just 1. So we get the 6 over 7 as our answer. So this nasty looking function here has a derivative that's just 6 over 7. All right, and last one. All right, x is on the bottom. We just have a number on top. We could do a quotient here if we wanted to. We could just bring up the x and say this is 9 fifths x to the negative 2. And now we can just do a power rule again. So y prime is, we bring down the negative 2. We get 9 fifths times negative 2x to the negative 3. One less exponent from negative 2 is negative 3. So we get negative 18 over 5 x to the negative 3, so the x can go down to the bottom, and we just become x to the third. So this guy comes down to the bottom and changes the exponent back to positive. All right, here's one for you to try. So go ahead and pause it and see if you can find the derivative of this guy by simplifying first, since there's just the one term on the bottom. So if we simplify first, we're dividing those two, we get 4x squared over 2x minus 8x over 2x. So if we divide here, we're going to get just a 2x minus 8 divided by 2 is 4, x over x is 1, so we just get 4. And the derivative of that, very simple, derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of 4 is 0, and we're done. And there's our answer, 2. So no matter what the x value was for this guy, the slope is always going to be 2. In fact, this guy is just this line with a hole at 0. All right, so that was the quotient rule. So we've learned now how to take the quotient rule, derivatives using the quotient rule, and to find tangent lines using the quotient rule. Next time we'll look at some more applications.